welcome to my uh, deep etching uh, tutorial. Um, in this one I'm going to be uh, basically getting rid of this nasty looking sheet in the background there and we can stick something else in the background which we want to. So we've all got nice smiles on our faces except for this little monkey here. who has got a bit of chocolate or something on her face too. So uh, we we'll probably want to replace that. That's the handy thing about if, if you're doing photos it's always nice, especially with families, to take a series of photos that you can pull uh, information from. Um, just on this, uh, this is uh, these tabs up here. Basically, show all the files I have open. Um, so if I click on this tab here, it'll show me a variation of that photo. So yeah, I've got a, a happy little face of hers. Although there's nothing else happening here, uh, we'll probably use that face to put in here too. So. Taking out backgrounds can be useful to both change the environment and to use elements for another. Um, for this one, instead of taking out the background, we're just going to steal some information here. I'm going to use this uh, marquee tool and just use the, the rounded one. Make a quick selection as I click and drag. With the marquee tool, if you hold the shift button in, it constrains it to uh, equal proportions. It'll keep it as a circle. As I hold the shift button in, you can see it jumps back to a full a proper circle. Um, but that's not really important. Let's make a selection around this little face that I want to include. Make sure I'm on the layer that uh, is required. Select the item tool. And I can go edit and copy or uh, command C, control C. And I uh, go back to the, the, the previous window that I was in. Um, if you can't access your window like this, uh, for some reason, let me just click and drag this off here. For some reason, this picture, this uh, image has gone behind here, and you can't select it. Here. You can go up to your window, and you can select it here. These are the open windows I have at the moment. As you can see, I haven't named that file anything yet. If I click on there, it'll bring it to the front. Uh, by clicking and dragging it back up to this area here, the moment the blue line appears, it means it's going to add it to those tabs and it sticks it back into the tabs yeah, it makes it nice and neat. So what I've done is I've selected there, I've copied it, edit copy, and I come over to this window here and I go edit paste. As I paste it, it's going to add it onto its own layer. Um, paste. You see it creates a new layer there and I can put here uh, Owen, that's my daughter's name, Owen face Okay, my type tool is having fun today, it's really slow. Okay, so now I can use this, it's on its own layer, with the item tool selected, I can click and drag it to wherever I need it. Uh, so I can kind of line it up more or less where it should be. If I want to make sure it's aligned completely, I can go to the opacity here and drop the opacity of that layer, making it relatively see-through. 50% is always a good number. And uh, hitting enter, I come back over here. And I want to zoom in, so I control or command spacebar to zoom in, click in where you want to be. And as I click on this layer, this layer selected, I click on here, I can see where the eyes want to be, so I'm line those eyes up. Okay, that looks about good. Looking at her face line here, uh, it's not quite right. Let me light the face like that. Okay, so I can bring the opacity back up again. 100. Okay, so you're raising a background. Also, once again, many ways to skin a cat. I can use, in this case, I'm going to use a mask. It's the most easiest way to use it. If I make a mistake, I can bring the detail back in again. So I click on here, down this little icon here, make a mask. The mask is selected with a square around it. Select my paintbrush. And I'm going to be painting stuff out, so when I sort it black, this I can reset it by clicking on this black and white squares here. Reset, bring the black to the front. And I can begin painting. So as I'm painting out this layer, you can see that the layer behind it coming back in again. Okay, so this is quick and easy. There's no rocket science to changing a face. Okay, make sure I get all of that face back in. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can just select and deselect uh, or turn on and off to make sure I've got all the spots. You can see there's something happening here. There's still something that's lying around there. I'll turn it on. Just, I can brush that out again just to make sure there's no little bits I've missed. 
because you will notice it later on you think oh well, that's weird why is that sitting there okay so sad face happy face you can see a bit of double chin happening here I'll zoom in a bit here that's because of the, the size of my brush is very soft so you see part of the the one face there and a part of the second face here so I need to clean that up a bit selecting the brush reduce the size of my brush and I can paint in the mask or at least paint it out by selecting white again I can paint that out there just to bring in the original face elements okay so that looks a bit more natural looks great okay on this I wouldn't clone on top of here once again I create a separate layer for cloning and I'd use my healing brush just to come in here and uh, clean up this face a little bit so she looks a little bit less dirty okay but, uh, this isn't a cloning lesson this is a erasing background lesson okay when it comes to erasing backgrounds um, I always like to keep the original copy so I'll make a copy of the background I don't necessarily like working on the background itself and I'm going to delete I'm going to switch off the background so I can see what's happening with the copy I've made here um, in addition to working with the background if I use my once again I'm going to use a mask because I can always paint it back in rather than using the eraser tool I don't like the eraser tool it's very permanent um, the mask lets me brush in and brush out so if I come here to the mask now and I uh, select my brush I can then begin brushing out the background it becomes very difficult to see um, uh, oops, swap this to black um, it becomes difficult to see where the edges are when you're using this brush like this so oftentimes the checkered background is a representation of transparency so it means it's transparent it's basically looking through a window there's nothing there um, if I put something in behind it I'm going to select the background layer because when I create a new layer it always creates a layer above the one I selected so I want to put a layer in between these two so I select the background layer I'm going to click on here and it's going to add a layer in there now what I'm going to do to help me see things I want to add a color in there so selecting this I'm going to put some nice color that isn't really represented anywhere else here so I normally like blue or red I'm going to say edit full I want the foreground color, that color there, so I say OK. And it hasn't put blue in there. What it's done is it put a big blue block behind that image. So now if I click back onto this image and I select the uh, mask, with my brush I can continue to paint out. As you can see, it almost looks like I'm painting blue. You've got to be very careful with this because if, I've, if I haven't got my mask selected and I've got that selected there, the picture, is blue so if I'm painting here I think I'm brushing out in the mask but what I'm actually doing if I trash this mask you'll see I'm actually painting on the image so I've destroyed my image actually so you have to be very cautious that you're on the right layer that you aren't actually painting on the image but instead actually painting onto the mask so my mask is selected um, cancel that and I can now paint in or paint out. If I happen to slip and go over there, I can just swap these colors around again and paint that mask back out. So I haven't lost any image. Okay, now where this is relative um, is if I want to put this onto another background. So let's, uh, for an example, uh, I want to put this onto a plain white background. So I'm going to select them and add a background and I'll make this one change those around. Edit, fill foreground color okay so let's put a nice white background in there um, okay so now with me painting this out here my mask is selected it looks like I'm painting so let me change to black it looks like I'm painting blue in here but in reality I'm just erasing it so if I turn the blue off I'm still have transparency there I'm still brushing out making it more and more transparent but now I can fill in a background so if I want to put my white background there there you go I put my white background in so it doesn't necessarily have to be blue it's just easier to see where you're working where you aren't working what you've missed sometimes you look and you think oh well, that's nice and clean but in reality with the white you can't really see on the white I've missed spots you can see it's kind of cloudy there if I brush over there again you see the cloudy cloudiness clears up and becomes clear white 
Um, when I'm depitching around, or when I'm erasing around here, I like a soft brush. Uh, if I use a hard brush, I'll harden this up, you're going to notice this straight away. Um, because your hair doesn't have a hard edge to it. Okay, so if I go in here, this is the kind of uh, deep etching in Photoshop you often see uh, where people quickly take a hard brush and they just run around it like this and they think, oh, that looks so pretty. Uh, it looks fantastic. Okay, it's not quite as noticeable on skin, um, but hair you definitely do notice it. So if I say, okay, well, that's beautiful, and uh, I want to take that picture now. I want to drop that picture into a nice background. Let me open up another background. Uh, shortcut for open is Command or Control O. It'll be File Open from this menu here. File Open, and uh, let's see if we can open up another picture here. We can just drop it into. Um, let's go to my tutorial folder. Here. <coughs> some reason I want to put a burger in the background. Sounds great. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to drop my burger in the background. I'm going to select, uh, select all or control Apple A, edit, copy, and I'm going to stick this burger in behind this layer. This is the layer I want. So I want to put it in behind it. So I put, click the layer below it and I say edit, paste. It's going to add a new layer with the burger in the background. There is my burger in the background. Okay, so I can move that background around a bit. Let's move it up. And uh, yeah, that's going to be my background. For some reason, I want a burger in the background. But look how awful that looks. Hard edge around the, the hair. It just really doesn't look natural. So because I've used my mask, I can clean it up a bit by using a brush. And I soften it up. Put a soft brush back in there again. And I can paint that back in. Oops. Just... Uh, Turn these around, make it white in the foreground because I'm painting in, not painting out. And I can put that in there nice and soft. So you can see instantly the difference between a soft hair and hard hair. Okay, so it looks a little more natural. Okay. Okay, so soft brush versus hard brush and deep etching. So that's basically the, the, the be all and end all of deep etching is basically creating a mask and brushing out the areas you don't want using your plus and minus. Okay, when it comes to skin you need to harden up your brush a bit because you don't want a bit of burger in your ear there. I think no one likes burger ears. So I harden that up a bit, probably 50% up to 80%. Uh, reduce the brush size a little bit and it gives me a bit of leeway to go around. So I've still got a slightly softened edge, but not quite as soft for the hair. And it lets me go around <coughs> this edge. Um, another trick, hold my spacebar in to uh, move my image in this window. I'm not moving the layer, I'm moving, I'm basically scrolling around my desktop as I've spoken before. Um, and I can just carry on down this area. As I said, a trick that uh, is quite handy. If I hold in my shift button, if I click here, with my brush and holding my shift button to create a straight line from where I last clicked to the new place I click. Okay, so you can create a nice curve by going along lots of short little lines. I hold the shift button in like click, 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 it'll go. See how it paints along that line. So I can go around a bend um, like that without having to do a free end. I can do it a lot more accurately by clicking on an edge and then lining up and clicking again, holding the shift button in. So that's quite nice to get around quickly using the shift button as you select. Okay, um, to do quick selections, you can use the selection tool. Let's minimize that. And I don't want anything in this corner here, so I can just quickly select around like that. And up the side, release, and select, and I can just fill that with black, with the foreground color, my mask is going to get rid of all of that. And then I can just clean up, so that was deselect, shortcut for deselect was uh, shift command or shift control D, uh, or oh, sorry, control D to deselect, shift control D to reselect. So I'm a little bit used to the shortcuts here, but you'll get used to them as well. The more you use them, it's, it's really handy to know the, the keyboard shortcuts, rather than going up to pull down menu and saying select, deselect. 
Okay, so you can be raise a big area like that and then just use your brush to clean up the smaller pieces you've missed. Increase your brush size of it. Okay, and clean up there. Okay, so I'm not going to go over this whole thing. I'm going to quickly jump back to this window here where I've already completed this. Um, this is the final image that I got out of it. Okay, so that's what the final looked like with the new little face in there. So, let me turn off there. That's uh, before and after of the deep etched elements. Um, now, some, a trick I did use and uh, something that I've learned to enjoy actually is uh, the background eraser tool. Um, for in between hairs like this, you don't want to get rid of that hair um, with the eraser tool. If I go back to this window here, oops, not the bigger one, let's close that. This one here, if, if I, the only way to really, especially if I'm putting in a different color, if I go around these strands here with my brush tool, I either have to include it or exclude it. I can't half include it. But the thing is, you're going to notice that I've stuck a different background in there because there's that white showing between the hairs there. So this is where it becomes a bit difficult to uh, to deep etch and still keep it natural. Uh, the option using this method would have to be erase all of that. Okay, which doesn't really isn't my best option. So the alternative would be to uh, not use a mask. I can trash my mask there. Delete. I'm not going to apply it. And uh, to use the background eraser tool, which is found under the eraser tool, select and hold in. And you click and hold in, and you go to the back background eraser tool. And now this works <coughs> similar to the magic wand tool, um, except it'll sample areas by that little cross. So discontinuous and contiguous, uh, or contiguous, discontinuous, means uh, it's going to either stop, if I start sampling here, it's going to st stop at the hair, or it's going to continue finding elements within the circle. So within my, my the, the circle running around the cross, if I click on it, it's going to erase everything relative to that spot. So it's a piece of my burger showing through there already. Okay, so as I drag around, it's deleting, depending on my tolerance levels as well, as to how much similar pixels to the one that's on that cross it's going to include. So 20 to 32 is a nice amount. I can drag around here, you can see it's going into the hairs and deleting similar pixels without deleting the hairs. Okay, if you go too close to the hairs, it'll start selecting the hairs as well. So that's basically including all of that. Uh, sometimes it goes into the hair, um, which isn't ideally what you want, but let's finish doing a quick and dirty uh, erasing around this hair here. Um, as I said, depending on how, what your tolerance levels is, it will determine how much it's leaving. I, I pref preferably enjoy using this for hair only, um, because if you look at the, the skin here, it has uh, left a white line around. You have to get really close to the skin in order to, to get that white line, and then you end up catching some of the, the interior skin, which is not what you want. Um, yeah, I see it's, it's leaving that white line. So basically what I'd do is I'd use this for selecting around the hair, and then I'd swap over to the eraser tool, um, and I'd just harden up my edge a bit, I say between 50 and 80%. 80 uh, drop the size down quite significantly. Hit enter, and I can readjust the size through the keyboard shortcut. And then I just clean up that edge, holding the shift button in and clicking around that edge like that, just to get rid of that white piece of uh, background still showing there. Okay, so that's the quickest way to do hair versus skin. So the hair looks relatively okay. Uh, you might have to clean it up here and there with the white. Um, to make sure that you aren't getting any, any halos, but it looks pretty natural um, using the background uh, delete key. Um, in areas where you have gone over and you've got a bit of background coming to the hair, the way to get around this, because as I say, erasing is pretty permanent, um, is you use your hist history brush here. Uh, we spoke about that in the introductory lesson. History brush and your history palette over here. Um, and you go back up um, well, here I've probably gone too far already. Let's just take a look and see. I don't want to go right back to the original blank page, but uh, let's click on here 
as a, a marker to how far I want to go back. And I'm going to paint inside of this hair here and see if I can paint back some of the hair that was taken out. There we go. I haven't gone back too far. So it's undoing that background deletion inside the hair. If I paint out here, it's going to take it right back, everything. So that's one way of kind of using a mask element. Um, is to paint, paint back in uh, parts that the background brush has caught. Um, same goes on my side here. You can't visibly see it, but uh, he has a bit of skin that the background brush caught, so I can paint that back in as well. Um, so it usually it's quite a good idea to go along the edge of uh, the background brush because it, it of often catches in some skin that you don't necessarily notice, but that was similar to the background color. So if you go around the insides of the hair, you can bring back in and make sure there's no hamburger showing through your hair. Okay, so that's the, the history brush with regards to deep etching. It's very useful when using the uh, eraser and the background tool. Um, otherwise, as I, as I said, the masks are very handy for that. Um, and that's about it. Uh, background eraser tool, very handy for irregular edges, such as hair or this Christmas tree here where you can't go in between every little strand then you just make a general selection and it'll kind of help you out as well and select all the white areas um, you've got to be very cautious if you go too far just undo um, and uh, maybe reduce your threshold a bit and uh, the area that you're sampling reduce the area a bit down a bit more and you can select more finite spots you make sure you get all the white in between the Christmas tree it's going to take a while, but at least you have these strands um, compared to deep etching by hand where you'd have to physically get your little brush or your eraser. If you, a brush if you're doing a mask eraser, for instance, what I'm doing now, and uh, reduce it. I don't know if you can imagine going around every single little strand like this. You'd be here uh, until Christmas, literally. <laughs> so it wouldn't help you. So quick and dirty. Um, I guess that's similar to the selection tool, the white magic wand tool. It's just, I feel it's more controlled than the magic wand tool where you're making selections. To add to a selection of the magic wand tool, you hold the shift button in and you can click extra pieces um, and add to that selection. But yeah, I, I don't know, I just prefer the background eraser tool. It just works so much better than selecting and deleting. Hit the delete button. Uh, deselect. Okay, so that's the other option. Or deleting with the magic one tool. Like I said, not my preference. <coughs> and that's uh, deep etching. Um, next, I uh, am going to show you using the hamburger um, how to use uh, paths when it comes to deep etching. Uh, this is when you have more of a harder edge. Uh, it's very good for product photography. Um, if you want a clean background uh, with your product, you can actually cut, literally cut out the product from the background rather than. Uh, deleting elements of the background. That'll be in our next tutorial.